Dr. Ricardo Corral. I'm a, one of the head and neck surgeons and skull based surgeons at the James Cancer Center at the Ohio State University. I also direct the global health, I'm the medical director for global health at the OSUMC. And I'm at the associate dean for faculty uh, advancement, mentoring, and engagement uh, for the College of Medicine. You're listening to the interview with the surgeon, with the surgeon agent. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Interview with the Surgeon. To welcome Dr. Ricardo Corral, otolaryngologist at Ohio State. Doc, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being with us. You know, kind of getting started, what were your goals and aspirations during your residency and how those changed throughout your fellowship? Interesting question. It's, it's not a, quite a linear path, what I had. Um, I trained in um, Puerto Rico, uh, so at that time my uh, my goals were to to do a fellowship and come back, come back to the University of Puerto Rico and the, the practice there, I wanted to do academics, but the academics are a little bit different from what you see in the States. Uh, academics there uh, are mostly a, a, a work of love. Uh, the the university pays very little, so in in almost a hundred percent of the attending surgeons have a private office. So you have a combination of private office and academics, and that, that was my initial goal. Uh, at that time, I knew that I had to go and pay my commitment to the Air Force. Uh, they had paid for my medical school, so I knew that I had to do that. Um, so when I, uh, I wanted to do a fellowship right after residency, but the Air Force had other ideas. They, they needed uh, general otolaryngologists more than head and neck surgeons. So they, they told me to come and, and work as a general ENT. Uh, in the middle of, of my commitment, then they offered me to go and do a fellowship. Uh, and the fellowship uh, opened, opened new, new pathways for me in the sense that uh, I, get, I got to, to know uh, people in, in very hardcore academics. I did a fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, which at that point and currently is one of the, of the most coveted positions for head and, head and neck surgery. Um, so I got, got to know people that were famous and that, that, I, that were kind of my idols as I was growing up in residency. Uh, and um, in the middle of, of the fellowship, they kind of hinted that they would be interested in hiring me after my commitment to the Air Force. Uh, and up to that point, that had not been a possibility in my head. Uh, so after uh, I was finishing my commitment, uh, I kept in, in touch with the people in Pittsburgh. They not only showed that they were still interested, but they showed more commitment to to taking me back and, and hiring me as a faculty. And uh, that was it. Uh, instead of going back to Puerto Rico, I, I decided that uh, it was a great opportunity to, to be part of the faculty at UPMC. And I stayed there for 18 years. So what was your mentality like going through that fellowship and kind of understanding the job process for your first time? And then how did that change through the beginning years of your career? Well, the, yeah, they, my, 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 again, my path was a little bit different because I, I still owed two years to the Air Force. So I knew I was going to have a, a job after, after my fellowship. I didn't have to search for it. They, they, they knew where I was and they wanted me back. Um, and when I was in the process of beginning to look for, for a job, then uh, I again talked to the University of Pittsburgh and they, they hinted that they wanted me back. So um, that was an easy process. It was uh, very, very fast. I didn't have to look elsewhere. They, they were my, my number one pick and I was their number one pick. So that was it. Um, now, uh, in, in the meantime though, um, of course you consider other possibilities. So I, I look at other, other places and that offer a job, I, I send letters. To, uh, to many chairs, just uh, telling them who I was and that I was interested in, in pursuing a career in academic head and neck surgery. Uh, some of them answered, some of them had positions open and they were willing to talk more. Uh, some of them did not have a position and some did not answer, which I think is kind of a standard uh, for that type of, of inquiry. And then kind of walk us through your journey on how you ended up at Ohio State. Ah, so, 
after 18 years in Pittsburgh, I decided that uh, it was time to, to look for new horizons. And at that time, I went to California. I actually went to, to work for the John Wayne Cancer Institute and the St. John's uh, Health Center. And that was private practice, actually. It was a completely different environment. Uh, unfortunately, uh, during that time was the time of the recession, 200 and, to, to 2007 to 2000, and, and actually it was 2010. So the recession was in full force. Uh, and the, all the plans that we have made uh, with the St. John's Health Center, Center had to be postponed because uh, the budgets are all were, were cut uh, the money that they were counting on was not there. Um, so it, I, I faced a different situation than what I had planned to, to have. Um, it was a good experience over, overall. I, I think that I met, I was working with a great group uh, and I made some wonder, wonderful connections and met some wonderful people, but it was not viable for me to, to stay in that environment uh, in the long term. So I started looking uh, for a, another landing path and uh, Danny Prevedello, who was a, a neurosurgeon I had worked with at UPMC, was in Ohio State. And he was the one who introduced me to the group. Uh, and at that time, I didn't think that they have any more space to grow because they had expanded tremendously in the, in the last five years. And uh, almost the next day, uh, they called me and said, hey, listen, we're actually looking for somebody with with your skills. So if you want to come and, and visit, uh, we can arrange for a trip. And uh, it was love at, at first sight. I, I love the group that I that I work with. Uh, they like me. And here I am. I ended up in Ohio State. And this is my 11th year already, which is just amazing how time flies. What would you say were some of the keys of your success that shaped your early career that allowed you to get to where you are today? Um, First, uh, I like to learn. I, I have an, what you would call intellectual curiosity. So that does two things. It, it keeps you growing because you want to learn more and more. Uh, it also keeps you on your toes because you're always looking uh, out of, of a better way of, of, of um, doing things. Um, uh, and it's uh, hard work. Even, even when it's a, it's a cliche, I, I worked really hard on my, my beginning. I was working 14, 15 hour days. Uh, that was routine uh, because you're trying to build a career and build a reputation. And, and uh, I, I didn't say no to anything. Uh, would I do it the same? Uh, most of it, but I would be a little bit smarter uh, about the, the tasks that I, I would choose to do. There are many tasks that, yes, I work very hard for no return at that point. So you, you, I think that I would, I would be a little bit more selective on, on what really task is gonna help me to grow what are tasks that are service that you just do because are part of your job? And, and what are tasks that uh, are not really conducive to either uh, personal or professional growth or, or to, to really provide a, a value to the institution, whether, whether it's personal or professional? Uh, and there, there's a lot of that. We, that, that is just, just menial tasks that takes your time uh, and really produce no no great value for anybody. Working with the next generation, what advice do you have for chief presidents and fellows entering the professional job market for the first time? Uh, first, uh, and again, this sounds like a cliche, but you have to know yourself. It's really what what do you want out of life? Uh, do you like academics? What do you what part of academics do you like? Do you like research? Do you like the clinical work? Do you like the teaching? There are many, many aspects of academics uh, that are very, very different. Uh, and sometimes they are not, they, they, don't, they, don't, they don't sync that well one with the other. There are some people that can do it all uh, and they do it very well. But you have to, to have your priorities straight. Uh, what type of, of salary are you looking for? I mean, it depends on your expenses and depends on what you want out of life. Uh, you may want to to look at, at different different ways of of uh, compensation, so to speak, uh, and see really what um, what is acceptable to you. What is enough? Uh, you can always have more money, but 
it, it gets to the point that it's enough and, and it, it, you cover their basic needs and the things that you want to have and after that it, it's, it, the, the value starts decreasing uh, for the amount of, of work that you have to put or, 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 or other things that you have to put up with. In any case, uh, I, I think that, that that would be my first my first advice is just look into things that you, you, you want to achieve in your life and then look at what institution fits in, into that. And I have, I have to, to warn you though, that it's like buying a house or buying a car. There's no perfect house, there's no perfect car. Uh, you go with what is best for you and then you adapt or you try to make it work down the line. Um, it, is, it is a working process. Um, life, life and work balance, uh, I think is, is another thing that you, you look at. Uh, it's kind of a misnomer because there's, to me, there's not such a thing as a balance. It, it just goes up and down. It's like a seesaw. Uh, and um, in the latter years, uh, I think that I have tended to look at my work and my life as just one instead of dividing them uh, and tend to try to, to do the things in my life in personal life and the things in my work that give me satisfaction and that brings value to my life and brings value to the people around me. And when, I can, when I'm able to do that, I'm very happy. Uh, and I, it doesn't matter what time I'm spending in one and one time I'm spending in the other because it's very fulfilling. So instead of looking at the two as separate entities, just look at what constitutes in each, in each branch uh, the things that you like to do and try to go for those. Uh, and it is, nothing is perfect. Again, there's some sometimes that you you cannot do that, uh, but for the most part, again, it, it it works better than trying to separate the two. In your opinion, what are you looking for in far as candidates are concerned when medical students are applying for residency spots and when residents are applying for fellowship spots? So I think it, it, it comes to the same three things. So we call it the three A's, right? So you have to have some ability. You have to have some availability, commitment, uh, and you have to, to be able to, to get along with people. So um, if you have, if you have the, the, those three characteristics, you have it made. After that, uh, you're, you're gonna have somebody for, that has the potential of acquiring mastery, which is more than just ability, is they go way and beyond. Um, but the, the main thing for, especially in, in my specialty, that uh, we tend to have people that have very high scores, they're very high achievers. So the, the things that, that we look for is really a team player. Uh, so how do you prove that? Um, it's a variety of ways. Sometimes it's hard uh, because it's somewhat subjective, uh, but somebody that is going to get along with the rest of the of the people that we work with and that is, is going to integrate and again add value to the to the team is what we look for if you were to do this whole medical training journey all over again what advice would you have given your younger self prior to getting this started uh, all, all the things that i talk about before is that the knowing yourself i i i, I, I tended to be uh, I think this is part of the certain personality. We, we're doers, right? And instead of really think, stopping and thinking what we're gonna do, we just go for it and we just do it. It's a, it's a, we see everything as a, as a task and we're very, we're very much goal oriented. But sitting down uh, and making a list of the things that you want uh, to get and, and the things that the, the places that you're considering offer uh, and uh, getting advice from other people, talking to, to, to the people who are there, to the people that went through it uh, a little bit more, it, it would be much better. Uh, and to, to a great degree, that was not available to me when I did residency, it was different times and people would look at that type of interaction a little bit different. Uh, but nowadays it's actually expected that you do that and it's applauded if you do it because you come, out, you come across a, as a more conscientious person. Um, so that, that would be my, my main advice to them. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Interview with the Surgeon. Until next time, stay focused and keep following your dreams.